never know me in the experience what we experience. We know it's by your grace, the reason why we are still here right now. <clears throat> and we thank you for it, God. God, use us for your glory any kind of way you want to to help a brother. Use us, God. Our story is our story, Father. I pray that you give these men the grace to share in the name of Jesus. All right. Now I don't want you taking no hour, or hour. So I want you to just—I want everybody who got some minutes want to share a story. I want you to hit it, you know, with a punch. You know, we just talking bullets. All right. You don't want to go all around and just bullets like I just gave that the, the bullets. I share, you know, it was right to the what? Right to the punch. Right to the point. You know, and, it, 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 and that's what I want y'all to do. Okay, once you get up there, just, you know, say your name and everything, and let them know you are still my ministry. You know, and uh, and just see if I can help anybody with my my pain. You know, I hope I can. You just go open up with your with your story concerning your pain. Come on, go ahead. Get uh, right. Here. Look at that camera and talk to him. Good evening. Uh, my name is Charles Wiley. I'm here at Stepping Life Ministry, and I just want to share the pain drugs and alcohol took me through. After I did up all the drugs, I had nothing else to do, so I cleaned my little niece's house out. And I didn't want to go through so much pain. I knew the pain behind it, everything behind it. I looked on top of her icebox and found a bottle of pills for depression. So I took the pills, got to taking them one by one, swallowing alcohol. It wasn't going fast enough. So I took the whole bottle and dumped them, just dumping them, dumping the alcohol. Took off my boots, because my family know I said I want to be buried in boots. I laid them on my chest and positioned myself like, the, like I was laying in a casket and just laid there. But I had sense enough to go down there open that door to let somebody find me. I laid there, I took them all, I took all the pills. My niece had came, she had came home, and she seen me laying there, tried to wake me. And she said she seen pills everywhere. She called the ambulance. They tried to revive me, I had no pulse, I had no heartbeat, they had pronounced me dead. God stepped in. Amen. God stepped in. Amen. And they brought me back. Mm. And when they brought me back, they was taking me to the hospital. <clears throat> I slipped into a coma. I was in a coma for three days. The doctor told my mother, he's, going to be, he's not going to be any good. He's going to be a vegetable if he come out of this. If he come out of it. So they was trying to get her to unplug the machine. Ooh. But I had a praying a praying mother. Yeah. A praying mother. Yeah. Everybody else I guess gave up, but my mother was right there. Ooh. My mother. Yeah. That third day I rose up out of that coma. Pulling plugs out. Mm -hmm. Pulling plugs out of me. I'm wondering where I'm at. My brain's still here. Mm -hmm. I'm still here through the grace of God. Thank God. That's what the drugs and alcohol will do to you. And that's pain. That's pain. Oh, thanks, brother. We're talking about a man's pain. And these men are sharing with you uh, their pain and what, what led them to it. it. It all stems from drugs and alcohol. You know, we're doing this because we don't want you to go down that road. And maybe one of these guys' stories can help you or uh, family that's going through what they've they gone through, you know. You uh, <clears throat> you look on, you look, call that number, check out our way about everything. Get in touch with us. And if you need somebody, you need to come into the ministry, come on to the ministry, you know. But my whole life is to deliver men from that type of pain because I experienced it myself. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, let me see what I got here. My name is Frederick Emerson, and uh, I'm in the Step in the Light program ministry. And pain is very powerful. 
it's uh, it's like you can write your own book like uh, Bishop Jerome said yesterday. We all have a book. And it's pain. I'm not talking about this book, but uh, it's pain. We all have a book. We can write a book right now. Everybody. It will be number one seller. I'm quite sure it will be. But uh, my pain is different. Everybody's pain is different in here. <clears throat> Mine was alcohol. And I'm thinking every time I drink, I stay up in my pain, but I'm thinking it go away because I was thinking, okay, I'm on top. I can do this, go to work, come on, pay the bills, do this, do that. But the pain wasn't going nowhere. <clears throat> and now that I know, I am 55 years of age, and I'm still going through pain, but I still believe that I will be delivered. Amen. That's what I'm here for. Amen. 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 I'm at the World Recorder, uh, down in Stepping Life Ministry. I graduated. Uh, <clears throat> well, Bishop knows my pain. You know, I told him I was in a relationship for uh, three years, and uh, the woman sent me through there. I'm talking about drug me like a dog. And I mean, Ooh. I'm talking about it was no hope. You know, and I just cried out to God. <clears throat> and, uh, God started showing me ways out. But I was so full of drugs where I didn't know the ways out when God was showing them to me. It's like when I got down here, I started realizing that God, every time I prayed, prayed to God, and I asked God to help me leave this, get out of this situation. He had always he had already done it for me. But I was so full of drugs where it was like I was blind to it. And now that I got when I got down and stepped in the life ministry, I started realizing. And God gave me a scapegoat every time. You know, but I was so drugged up that I, I couldn't see it then. So now it's that I pay attention to signs and symbols now. You know what I'm saying? And God has just revealed a lot of things to me now. You know, it's like I'm so focused on the word now yeah. that I, I, I can't let the enemy step in no more. You know what I'm saying? It's just that I'm striving. You know, and I want this more than anything in the world. You know, I, I, I want my life. You know what I'm saying? And whatever it takes for me to do. That's what I do. You know what I'm saying? I don't hang around young people. You know what I'm saying? If I don't got nowhere to go, I come to the end. This is my life. You know what I'm saying? And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk this. Praise God. Praise God. He graduated like he said, he comes back to the ministry, comes back to class, and he showed himself. And that's what I encourage these people to do once uh, they get some things in their lives. Uh, come back to the ministry and encourage another one. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Ron Warbington. Uh, I'm here at Step in the Light. Uh, this is my home now. Uh, I've suffered a lot of pain going through my life. As a kid, I started off drinking and smoking yeah. weed and getting high early in life, you know, as a kid, from that pain, because, you know, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know that it was pain, because I thought, you know, I was upset or mad. I'm, you know, to me, it's just in my mind, but I'm thinking if I take a drink or take a smoke or whatever, it's going to ease that pain, but believe me, that pain doesn't go away. Because after that high comes down, you still got that pain in you. It's in your heart. And it's in your mind. And it's not going to go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? But you need to fight. This place has helped me so much. Because, like it says, stepping into the light. Out of that darkness. There's a lot of darkness out there. And I want all the men, all the youngsters, you know, men, to really listen to what these brothers got to say. Because it's helped me. And it'll help you. Because, see... It's the enemy out there that's, that's trying to take your life. Yeah. And without Jesus, you're not going to make it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, a, it's a war. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have this war on our lives. Mm -hmm. But you know, like I said, I'm dressed for, the, uh, for this war. Mm -hmm. And it's in my heart mm -hmm. to do the right thing, mm -hmm. to get myself back in order. I'm 60 years old now. Mm -hmm. I just turned 60. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been here for one year. I graduated on my first day, got my certificate, and I'm loving life now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not feeling torn down and beat up. 
like I was. So all I'm suggesting is that you try to get your life together, come over to Jesus' side. Step into life. You need help, come down and talk to somebody. And you might, this program might, it will work for you too. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, we, yeah, we do have a four house. Hello. Hello. My name is Joseph Galloway. I've been with Step in the Light Ministry since 2009. Mm. It's been a long road, but my pain started many, many, many years ago. Mm. <clears throat> my pain was in depression because I suffered several major losses in my life. Now that pain that I have, it's not completely gone, but it is getting less and less each day. So what I experienced was when I came here, you know how I was, I was deeply depressed, wasn't I? Okay. So. And you know why I was depressed. You know my testimony. And for those that don't know, I will explain it to you in private. So what my pain is, is I'm still feeling this pain today, but it's less than it was yesterday. It'll be less again tomorrow than it is today. You know, about your pain, what happened? Obviously, all this, for sure. Okay, um, back in 1984, my uh, fiance was killed 30 days before the wedding on April 10th. Wow. Our wedding was scheduled for May 10th of 1984. On May 10th of 1984, my dad had a massive heart attack and passed away. So I lost two of the most two people that I love the most, the two people I love the most, my father and my fiance. That drove me <coughs> into depression. That depression can lead to suicide. Now that suicide, I was looking for a way to do it, to be able to slide under the gates of heaven. There is no way of doing it. You know, praying that a truck would come and uh, hit, hit me as I'm traveling in my vehicle. Um, you know, something break on the car and go crane it off the, the ledge or the ditch or something. You know, I was looking for ways to do it. But God had another purpose for me. That's right. He put me in a business. Shortly thereafter, well, the business no longer works. To speed it up, speed it up to like so, the day when, we, when you went to school and how the Lord used you <clears throat> to get well, a young man saved. The uh, <clears throat> thing that this pain did for me was to get me to focus on me so that God can use me as a advocate for others. Uh, in 2011, I entered Rankin Technical College. Mm -hmm. I have two degrees, one in Electrical Automation Technology and one in Control Systems Technology. Right. But during that time in school, a young man, his name is Jacob, he asked me why I do some of the things I do. I'm there an hour before class. I go up to the uh, Student Achievement Center, and I study, and I work on my projects. When <coughs> class is done, I'm back up there in the Student Achievement Center for until 6 o'clock in the evening, until they close the place down. Mm. He asked why. I said, I've got to do this, because at my age, it takes me longer to get some of this information. But I said, God has got a purpose for <clears throat> he wants me to bring people to Christ. Mm -hmm. And Jacob didn't know Christ mm -hmm. until he talked to me. 
he asked me why my lifestyle was the way it was. <coughs> Christ is, in, is my lead. I'm former military, so I understand about leadership. Okay? So Christ is my captain, my colonel, my general, my president. Mm -hmm. So if I lead one man to Christ, I've been successful, which I have been. Now this young man, I saw him uh, several months ago. He's now married. Hmm. They're expecting their first child next May. And uh, he's saved. His wife is saved. So it does work. I guarantee you, it does work. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get the gospel. That's the reason why the Lord didn't allow them to kill himself because God already had looked at the future and saw the young man Jacob. He wanted a young man Jacob saved. By Jacob being saved, his wife got saved. Of course, when the child comes, the child will be saved. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Talking about your pain. John. Is that it? Uh, Hello, my name is uh, John Ellis. I'm coming from Stepping in the Light. Uh, I've had pain pretty much throughout my life. Uh, actually, uh, I would say I had a pretty good life <coughs> you know, uh, up until about 80, 81, 82. Uh, my father got assassinated. He got killed by Arthur. And... Uh, Coming up, he was my best friend, you know, and I, we hung out together, and we opened up a business together and everything. So, uh, I found him, I found him killed, and after that, well, you, I, you, you were you? I was uh, 27. Okay, and you found him dead? Dead, yeah. What were you finding? What was he at? He was at his house, he was at his house right on Franklin, and, uh, Martin Luther King, sure, right there in the way. They went in his house and killed him in his house? Went in his house and <clears> shot <throat> him in the eye and shot him in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was the first to fight. Well, his girlfriend called me and I left my job. I was working out in the dude. I got on Highway 40. I don't know how I got from there to Jefferson and Martin Luther King in five minutes. I was flying. Mm -hmm. I got there and, uh, and I seen him laying there. And, you know, still me being, I don't know, just refusing to admit that he was dead because there was so much blood, man. This thick off the floor. But I still, knowing my father, because he was my hero, mm -hmm. I still thought he was going to get up. Yeah. You know? So, that never did happen. And that kind of boom. And it's something that I kept inside because I wanted to be a man for my sisters because I'm the only boy. So I kept it inside. And I drowned it with alcohol and, and drugs and drugs. Just got out of control trying to keep this inside. And I guess people probably noticed I was traumatized by it, but I didn't notice it, you know. So I thought I was doing what I, all men do. They hold it in, drink, go to work, do what they do. So uh, I got on the uh, crack real bad and started doing unspeakable things to my family members, their homes, and stuff, you know. And uh, it made me uh, depressed, you know, extra depressed because I would, I would look at people around me, my neighbors and everything, how they run out the house and jump in the car and go eat something or go shopping. Or, everybody seemed happy with me. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was in this glass looking outside of what mm -hmm. life really spoke mm -hmm. that being. Right. So uh, I, I, I dropped down on my knees one night and cried on the corner of the streets, on the corner. Just beg the Lord to help me, take this away from me, forgive me for all this stuff. Amen. Honest God, truth. Mm. The Lord took that crack taste away from me. Yeah. I haven't smoked it since, and that was in, in my old two years. I just took it away. One day I was hard on it, the next day I had no desire for it. So I thank the Lord first and foremost for that. And secondly, he also led me here to stepping in the light. Right. Even though I might have failed a couple of times mm -hmm. or disagreements a couple mm -hmm. of times, I keep getting up. He keeps bringing me here. That's and right. Bishop, with his grace and his mercy, he's uh, um, 
led me back again yeah. and again. And I, I appreciate that because yeah. I'm getting it more and more as I come. And this time yeah. I'm walking in there and it's going to be walking. So I, I feel some joy now. I, feel, I, I like the, like the, the, um, the prayer walks yeah. we do. Yeah. Look, constructive thing. Yeah. Doing the line, anything. Yeah. It's just doing something. Because mm -hmm. at first I was just sitting on the corner drinking. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I'm talking about a man's pain. Anybody else? Anybody? Hey, Bishop, could I just add something? Go ahead. This, uh, I just want to add this again. I'm Ron Warner. You know, I just want to add this little thing in here. As I heard my brother talk about how he lost his father. I felt that same way about my father, man. And, uh, Father died, he was 70 years old. Okay, see, now we still talking that pain because it's always there. It's always, first, it's a lot of times a loved one. Now, I was upstairs, my sister called me, she said, Ryan, come downstairs. Daddy ain't moving. I'm coming down there, he's laying there with his eyes open, but he's not breathing. So I tried to do CPR best I could, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I said on TV. Mm -hmm. And I brought him back for a while. As long as the ambulance got there, and they took him to the hospital. They worked on him there. Then he passed away. Now, soon after that, it was my mother. My mother was 96 years old. You know, longevity runs in our family. She went to the hospital. She they were, you know, I won't be too personal, but she had perforated body. So at her age, they said she might not make it through the surgery. We said, well, just do what you got to do. Help my mother. <laughs> Me and my three sisters. All the grandkids were there. And uh, well, she didn't make it. She died at 96 years old. Praise God. Right after that, my wife, I was married for 18 years. To one woman, beautiful woman. She passed. She had a heart. She had open heart surgery. She didn't make it. So I'm just saying, all these things, they bring that that hurt and that pain. And you think you can drink it away or smoke it away or shoot dope or whatever, it don't work. Mm -hmm. But the pain will still be there, but you have to pray. You know, pray to the Lord, forgive this about your sins, repent, 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 <clears throat> and ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom and guidance and strength. He'll help you. Amen. Amen. So now you see um, pain comes in, in different forms, you know, different aspects. You know, some pain comes from death, words, most of the lifestyle of wrongful living, losing a job. You know, but God is a, is a good God. He's a, he's in the He still is delivering you in right now out of that pain. I know in my heart there's somebody out there listening. Looking at the uh, web, <clears throat> and you're saying, That's me. Mm -hmm. If God did it for us, He can do it for you. <clears throat> Let me pray for you right quick. Father, I lift up this, this young man right now. You know his situation, you know what he's going through, you know his pain, Father. You know. Mm -hmm. So, Father, I pray that you deliver him from his pain, God, because you say you don't show partiality, Father. Deliver him like you delivered us, Lord God. And Father, help him like you helped us, Father. Yeah. Use that young man for your glory, Father. Yeah. We put him in your hands, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's go help somebody right there, y'all. Let's go help somebody right there. Don't get that out.